Good morning and welcome to Chatty Walks with Angela. My name is Angela and we're actually looking at the Shard in the distance between those beautiful ends of autumn trees. Nearly all the trees have lost their colour now and their leaves. And we are in Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. Or that's, I don't, are they still called it today? That's what they were certainly called a long time ago. And this walk is actually going to be walking from Vauxhall along the river to the Battersea Power Station. Now we did have some sunshine, clouds are arriving, of course they are now. It's the very, very end of November and we're due some quite cold weather, maybe even some snow. Let's see if that comes. I can see a squirrel on that tree. Squirrels are very active. We have a lot of parakeets in my area and the parakeets have been very, very active this morning. So you can see a train coming into Vauxhall Station and the MI6 building rising up above it. Vauxhall is on the main line in and out of Waterloo to the southwest. And I have been coming in and out of Vauxhall Station for literally decades. And it's, it's just had massive redevelopment, massive redevelopment. The Nine Elms redevelopment area, got the MI6 building we just saw as part of the redevelopment. Um, what else? We have the US Embassy, which hopefully will catch uh, on this walk as we walk along the riverside. Very controversial redevelopment in many respects. Has it truly served the population? I think there's a good argument to say no, it hasn't makes you frustrated. Can we not do better serving redevelopment? But that's another story and this is a walking channel. So I've got all these little plant boxes. Love different. Love Vauxhall. The home of Vauxhall Motors a long time ago. Of course we got somebody with a drill. Impossible to film without something like that going on. Right, let's move on. We're going to walk right under the railway lines. We're actually going to be heading uh, west along the river. Let's go under here. So we're going right underneath Vauxhall Station. And they've got this lovely... Uh, the, the, so this is the Vauxhall Cross Interchange Mural created in 2003. Got this map here. And then I love what they have here is, and the, the other one that goes under the station as well. It's got some history. Vauxhall was once Fawkes Hall, the manor house of Fawkes de Briote, a Gascon mercenary in the King's service in the early 13th century. A hundred years later, the Black Prince, as Duke of Cornwall, began building Kennington Palace, situated near to the current Kennington Cross. So it's a, they've got these lovely little things. Here they drink and there they cram chicken pastry beef. I love this uh, description of the river as well. Where does it start, the long dirty river? In the morning it's blue, when it's overcast it's brown like tea, at sunset red and orange like there's a fire, and at night black as black coffee, I'm in a cycle lane says here you know when you're born in Lambeth they give you a silver shovel. Got some old pictures here and everything just lovely and obviously you've got all the cycles parked here and I'm just in front of that one. And then we've got some old stuff of the old gardens, Vauxhall Gardens in the 18th century. So I'll tell you a little bit about Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens because they're kind of key Surrey Ironworks, Vauxhall Ironworks. It's really sorry, this is a really fascinating mural. Vauxhall Ironworks Co. Limited. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, mural, it's lovely. Okay, let's, um, let's get back to the walk, shall we? So, as it said at the start of the mural, the Gascon mercenary Fort de Biote gains possession of, surprise, surprise, an area that was largely marshland. Don't you know it? just about everywhere, everywhere I take you filming, used to be marshland. Built a manor in 1233 through his marriage 
to a wealthy widow, Margaret de Redford's, and built, as it says on the mural, Forks Hall, later called Fox Hall. Sounds something similar to Vauxhall, Fox Hall, as we look at the MI6 building ahead of us. So we're on the interchange here. Got this quite iconic sculpture here. Just cross over. Um, just behind us then as I cross. So you can see we've got this uh, really busy road and you've got the buses here and then over there you have Vauxhall train station which is where we've just come in. Quite a lot of sun in the sky at the moment and all these enormous buildings that we're going to be walking through. So we're going to walk through these buildings along the riverside to Battersea Power Station. Let's see if we can get across with a green man. Yep. It's always incredibly busy here. Traffic galore. Try and keep showing you what you can see here. So as I said, buses over there, railway line, train station through there. And we're approaching the bridge now. Here we are. And here it says, don't you love that? Vauxhall Bridgefoot. I love that. Vauxhall Bridgefoot, SE1. Oh, we can cross again. Try not to get mowed down by a cyclist. Here we go. Keep going, and Keep going. Oh, 10 seconds. I think we can do it in 10 seconds. Right, and it's, uh, it's hard to know which direction to look. It does tell me. I don't know we'll see them on the road. Okay, here we are, back in the centre. <laughs> there we have a bus. And here we have the MI6 building. And I think we can cross again now. No, we can't. Red man, people are just taking their chances. So while we're standing here, I'll show you the MI6 building. So, Secret Intelligence Service, MI6, moved to a purpose-built headquarters at Vauxhall Cross in 1993. This site had previously been proposed as a mixed-use community space. We have a green man. So it had been planned to have shops, homes, offices, that sort of thing. Um, but the government bought it in the early 90s. And the rest, as they say, is history. You see the MI6 building every single time you go past on the train. You say, there they are. There are some spies from secret intelligence services. We head towards the bridge. So we are heading uh, north east direction at the moment. The other side of the bridge is Pimlico. Surprise, surprise, it being a bridge. Vauxhall Bridge is Grade 2 listed, who knew? So we're in Vauxhall now, and as I said, Pimlico on the north bank over there. Check out my Pimlico walk. It's a very popular walk, the Pimlico walk. A lot of people seem to like that one was a much longer walk than I planned and I was very late for my lunch date. Um, my lunch date from the day, if you're watching, sorry about that, and we still need to book our Christmas do. Okay, look over there. You can see Westminster, Big Ben, looking east along the river. Quite a dramatic, quite often get dramatic cloudy skies when I walk here, I don't really know why. And I'll just point you backwards before we head down to the river. I'll fill you in with a few more historical details. Welcome to the channel if you're new to the channel. We are sort of history light and chatter more. So here we are, St George's Wharf, London SW8. I'll go on, get on to that. Massive redevelopment. I should come over here, I won't poke you through the fence, no point. This is the Riverside Walk, and this is part of the redevelopment here 
of Vauxhall Riverside. As we walk away from Vauxhall Bridge, I'll give you a few interesting facts. Opened in 1906, it replaced an earlier bridge, originally known as Regent Bridge, named after George, Prince Regent. It was later renamed Vauxhall Bridge, built between 1809 and 1816, see historical facts, as part of a scheme for redeveloping the South Bank. So this part of the Thames has gone through so many different redevelopments. And there's one of them, Battersea Power Station. You'd almost think I'd planned it, wouldn't you? There's Battersea Power Station. These things are always here, always got these things on the river. So there's the bridge there. It was built on a spot that used to be served by a ferry, as was often the case. And Westminster and Battersea were the previous uh, sort of fixed bridges. And actually when Vauxhall Bridge was built, they had to pay uh, monies to Battersea Bridge to reimburse from, uh, for the loss of toll toll income. So yes, these bridges were all toll bridges actually from Hammersmith through to Waterloo. They were toll bridges until an Act of Parliament removed said tolls uh, in uh, 1879, I think. And actually the naughty owners of Vauxhall Bridge did not pay the proper monies to Battersea Bridge and got sued. And Battersea Bridge finally got there money and there is Vauxhall St George Wharf Pier where you can get an Uber and I have still yet to get an Uber along the Thames. What is wrong with me? Here we are St George Wharf. Get onto that as well. Part of the redevelopment, a big part of the redevelopment. And as I finish up about Vauxhall Bridge, oh can you see the post office tower in the distance? Hey post office tower. Oh and you can see the London Eye as well. Could you just catch that? Great views from here. Vauxhall's a great spot to just start a walk, basically. You've got Westminster and everything in one direction to the east, and you've got Battersea Power Station, Chelsea, etc., to the west. So it's, it's not a bad area to start a walk. It's only one stop out of Waterloo as well. Um, yes, where was I? Oh, so yes, the, uh, the old Vauxhall Bridge uh, was the first in London to carry trams initially horse-drawn trams but shortly after it opened converted to carry electric trams and they ran until 1951 and in 1968 Vauxhall Bridge and Park Lane became the first roads in London to have bus lanes. This was supposed to be originally a prosperous suburb so when they sort of redeveloped uh, Vauxhall and, and south of the river they thought they were going to get the gentry and that type of thing as was so popular at the time but John Dalton of uh, the Royal Dalton Company set up a stoneware factory here that brought in a lot of uh, working class workers and tenement buildings and poverty and the usuals and also across the river slightly up the river you had the pill, pill bank, mill bank penitentiary from where many uh, British convicts were sent to Australia and source of the expression POMS. See my Pimlico video. I'm going to give it all away here, you know, just showing you some more of the development work. And I suppose one final point about Vauxhall Bridge, they had planned to replace it in the 1960s with a modern development containing seven floors. And I sort of keep looking at that and thinking, I beg your pardon, how do you put seven floors on a bridge? Shops, office space, hotel rooms, leisure facilities, but it costs too much. I think in, in modern times it would have been 156 million to fund Crystal Span, as it was called. Keep showing you along the river. So it's quite cold. I'm here with Luke. Say hello. 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 I'm Luke. Technical support. Technical support. <laughs> <laughs> Very necessary technical support. <laughs> I think it's fair to say it's cold today, isn't it? It is freezing. Yeah, yeah. it is freezing. It's about seven degrees, I think. Right. I wore some big trousers today and I did not think about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we thought it through, did we? <laughs> now I'm going to point upwards 
and then I'm going to give you a description that I hope doesn't offend you. Um, yeah. So I think this is what's known as St George Wharf Tower. We up we go and up we go and up we go some more. And this has been described as a thrusting phallus among many other things. People have been rather rude about this development. So the, this whole area that the development has been widely criticised by architects and social commentators. Uh, it won twice the Architect Journal's Worst Building in the World Award and has been described as unspeakably ugly. Sociologically and politically, accusations of land grabbing and the perpetuation of social inequality have dogged this whole development. And it's been an interesting thing from my point of view. Um, I think I've been coming through Vauxhall and I don't like to say probably three decades now and it's incredible the redevelopment uh, from the train you're just kind of struck by all these buildings right next to each other and you think are you like staring into each other's windows 20 floors up or something like that and how much did you pay for the privilege of being right next to another block of flats pointing upwards I think they cost an awful lot of money so I'm just going to point you eastwards one more time there you are you can see the London Eye again Oh, see a plane up there as well there was a helicopter earlier so as I said this was sort of intended to be a more gentrified area sort of in the 18th 19th century but became much more working class you have the power station uh, Vauxhall Motors uh, the Royal Dalton works um, so commercial units railway junctions and it became very very run down and that's how I remember it so I remember Battersea Power Station in its rundown <laughs> decades um, and this area too and it was sort of re, you know regenerated from the 1990s yeah. to create an upmarket chic riverside residential and business hub as I said subject to uh, massive criticism and within one decade I think prices went up by over 50 percent and mostly flats but anyway let's not be negative this is a still a lovely riverside space and I actually really like walking along here I have to say I wish you could walk directly to Battersea Power Station along here you can't you have to take a little little sort of cut uh, inland to actually get there but hey ho want to go back to history a bit you may just want to enjoy a walk in silence along the river and here I am chatting away so going back to Forks de Briote who built his manor on the marshland here he actually lost his lands after rising up against Henry VIII well that didn't go very well did it so he lost his lands but here's a fascinating point the Vauxhall Motors Griffin so if you've got a, if you've seen a box or car you know what the griffin looks like on it it's the family coat of arms of Fawkes de Briote so the original founder of Vauxhall that griffin their family coat of arms is what you see on a Vauxhall car today isn't that interesting showing you a bit of beach as I always do look towards the city of London there so that's a fascinating point for you now, why did I start at the <laughs> at the pleasure gardens? Because I didn't really get onto that, did I? So Jane Vaux, as in V A U X, possibly a descendant of Fawkes de Briote, owned a house here in 1615 with 11 acres of grounds called the Spring Gardens, which were opened as a pleasure park in 1660. And Samuel Pepys, he pops up all over the place as well, doesn't he? Samuel Pepys recorded later in that decade that he went by water to Fox Hall so 17th century it was already called Fox Hall and walked in the spring gardens now there is another fascinating point coming up so by the early 1800s the gardens provided refreshments concerts fireworks displays of pictures statues 
lit by over 1,000 lamps at night. So it's quite the place to come and be. And it became really prestigious, did Vauxhall Gardens, which is what they were called by 1785. And similar parks, so, so Vauxhall Gardens were actually so influential that similar parks were laid out in several cities. The Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen, if you've been there, I have, love Copenhagen. In Russia, the Grand Station Pavilion, where concerts were performed at the Pavlovsk Pleasure Gardens, was named Vauxhall. And I know because I've been there, because I used to speak Russian, because that was my degree and my PhD. So it was named Vauxhall because of Vauxhall's synonymous association with musical entertainment. So here comes fascinating point number two arising from Vauxhall. Pavlovsk was the destination of the first Russian railway line, which arrived there from St. Petersburg. And I've been on that railway line many times in 1837. And the word Vauxhall came to mean station in Russia. And I must admit, when I first learned Russian many, many decades ago, I was quite confused by the fact that Vauxhall was the word for station. Now, here's, here's the Uber boat, which you probably heard squeaking in the background. And there it goes quite fast. <laughs> That's a lot of speed on that Uber boat. So there you go, Vauxhall Motors Griffin, based on the original mercenary who developed the lands here. And Vauxhall became the name, Russian word for station, based on the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. Isn't that interesting? There you go, stuff you wouldn't have known about Vauxhall. You are very welcome. So there's your brief history as we wander along here. You can see that it's quite easy to see. You've got various um, sort of decades represented in the building development here. So 80s, 90s, and then, you know, once we got into the noughties and the massive regeneration efforts. And as I said, if you go down there, that will get you over to Chelsea. Though I think, I'm sorry, I'm probably showing you Battersea Bridge at this moment in time. You can see the train going across as well. Ah, we have another beach. I'm just going to point you over there. And you might be able to see a swimming pool in the sky. And we're going to head there in a sec towards a swimming pool in the sky, like you do. If I don't get lost, and I often do, trying to walk through here. It's actually an old friend of mine from my PhD days, uh, visiting from Germany. And I came, came uh, to meet him here. And I said, it's lovely here. I must film a walk. So here we are. So thanks mate for that. All right, let's see if we can cross over. Press the button. And there it is. Do I see a fire engine coming? I guess I better give it right away and all. Oh, eh. <laughs> takes a while to cross. <laughs> I'm going to be a bit naughty and go on across anyway. I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing you at. Over there it says Embassy of the United States of America. See if we can get across them a bit. There's a white van coming. So I might as well start talking about it. I've been pointing you at it for long enough. All right, let's cross. Here we go. Now, I don't know if I'm allowed to point a camera <laughs> around here, so um, I'll go a little bit careful. So this is the US Embassy in London, the diplomatic mission of the United States in the United Kingdom. 
the largest American embassy in Western Europe. And the focal point for events relating to the United States that are held in the United Kingdom. And as you come into Vauxhall Station, you can just see it peeking through the buildings. So it was a competition to design it. And the winning design is designed, can you see? Sun's gone in a bit, so it's not capturing it. Is designed to resemble a crystalline cube with, let me see if I can show you, a semicircular pond on one side and surrounded by extensive public green spaces and the embassy gardens housing and business development. Now call me a wuss but I don't want security <laughs> stopping me at the US Embassy. So I'll just show it to you from here. There we go. So that's your building and then I'm going to take you through to the swimming pool in the sky. Now, if you saw my Halloween video, which crashed and burned a little bit actually, uh, because the signal went bad, but you may remember if you saw the Halloween video, that I filmed the old US Embassy at um, Grosvenor Square. And that's now a building site, being redeveloped, rebuilt as something else. This one has been here since 2017. formally opened in 2018 and obviously benefits from views of the River Thames. These are public gardens. I'm going to point my camera that way a bit. As I said, just want, you know, not to upset anybody too much around here. Show you in that direction as well. We've got pond around the edge but I'm mostly interested in showing you the swimming pool in the sky, which is just coming into view over there. I don't know if you can see it. Here we go. Part of the whole development of the area, and might I say similarly is controversial <laughs> for what it represents. What have we got here? We've got a sign, the Embassy Landscape, an integrated site. Since John Adams became the first minister to the court of St. James, the diplomatic presence of the United States of America has been an integral part of the London landscape. The current embassy anchors the revived formerly industrial Nine Elms neighbourhood and is tightly connected to its neighbourhood, the borough of Wandsworth and central London through its many cycle paths. Nine Elms, I don't know if I mentioned to you, is the largest sort of regeneration uh, in the UK. That's very big. There it was. Embassy of the United States of America on the sign with a fountain. No pets allowed here. Okay, it says polite notice, no pets. And an enormous amount of people walk their dogs here. Another additional piece of information uh, about the US Embassy. Since 1955, Winfield House in Regent's Park has served as the ambassador's official residence. I do plan to do a walk actually in Regent's Park. So here we are, Embassy Gardens and the Sky Pool. There it is. <laughs> I, I've never seen anyone swimming across it. I, I'd really like to. <laughs> It'd be fascinating to see somebody swimming uh, with decent clothes on, please. So the Sky Pool is a swimming pool at the Embassy Gardens. So this is the Embassy Gardens development, just so you know, around the US Embassy. Got something here that says South Pavilion Consular Services. So this pool that you can see is 115 feet or 35 meters above the ground, forming a bridge between two tall apartment buildings, as you can see. Unveiled in May 2021, 
This has been criticised. <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> it has been criticised as emblematic of economic inequalities in London. It has been described as a pool securing an ultra elite experience at the cost of casually insulting a city in the grips of an affordable housing crisis. Or alternatively, as a jewel, a jewel in plain sight of all, but out of reach to almost everyone. So as I said, controversial. It's fascinating. I mean, I don't know if I'd be scared to swim in it. I'm quite, is, that, is that too wussy to be scared to swim in it? I don't know. And here we are, Embassy Gardens. Can't see any fish. As I said, you see an enormous amount of people walking dogs around here. Very popular dog walking area. If I was an official vis visitor, apparently I'd have to go to the East Pavilion. I'm not an official visitor. I don't think they're that interested in me. So to access the pool on the sky deck, you have to be a member of the club. There's a special club for residents at Embassy Gardens. I think it's called the EG Club or something. It has a spa, orangery and bar. In 2017, when all this was going up, 25 apartments were released for sale by Eco World Ballymore. You might have seen their offices behind us, with prices for the homes that overlook a sky pool starting at one million. The pool being the world's first floating swimming pool. So that's what you get for a million quid. You get an orangery and a bar and a spa and the ability to swim across. If you're allowed to swim across nude, that would be weird. And that's that really. Here we are in the beautiful Embassy Gardens area of London. And as you can see, I'm going to trip over here. I'm actually falling over some stones on the ground at the moment. So you can see we're still building here, very much so. Halfway building complete building, a bit like living on a building site around here, I very much suspect. I will head back to the river now. Can't say I didn't get a little bit anxious at the guys with guns. <laughs> Did you get anxious at the guys with guns? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Hi, nothing to see here. Nice yeah. person. I mean, they sounded friendly enough. They did. Hello. Didn't want the guns, did we? I'm not used to seeing that. I know, I know. I know. Not sure what's the gun. So let's just turn you. So we got, I see some uh, paint there, paint work there, and this uh, crystalline structure. And you can see we've got a sign here Battersea Park, which you could walk through. You can walk through Battersea Park around um, Battersea Power Station. Uh, ch check out that video as well, it's not bad. I'm hoping we can walk through here. This, this bit of the walk, I get a bit blind. Um, so very much hope that we're going in the right direction. I see a lot of lorries though. If it gets boring, I'll, I'll cut forward to, to another part of the walk. Oh, wow, that's a, a foot. Hmm. I think we're at the car park here for the US Embassy. Not the most glamorous of places. And a posh car, cleaning it up. Do you reckon he's transporting someone? I reckon he might be. Uh, with deliveries, again, consular services. Waitrose car park, <laughs> so everything, everything here. Okay, let's head back to the river and we'll rejoin the walk there. See you there. And we're back. So we were just coming over there from Waitrose. I thought, it's not that interesting. You don't need to see in a win Waitrose window. So there is the thrusting phallus as it was described. <laughs> um, let's head back to the river now, shall we? So we can rejoin the river. There's a bit that you can't walk along the river. I, I quite like this bit here. I think in the summer it's probably better. Last time I was here, it was a beautiful sunny day. A bit different today, obviously, but it's a beautiful uh, autumn, November day. I actually love autumn. 
I prefer it when the leaves are orange and on the trees but you can't have it have it your own nose there's the black cab coffee co which I think is okay actually you see a plane high in the sky as I said it's your best route back to Heathrow if you're lucky enough to come along the Thames um, from the east um, and you sort of go over the shard and things like that so here we have St Michael the boat which is here just about all the time and the one next to it I, I don't know if you can actually live on these try and get you a bit of light on there I'm saving up for a new Osmo Pocket. Oh, this is Tideway Village, so I'm guessing it's um, the Newark. Oh, it's actually a, a describing a boat. Built in 1950s as a Thames lighter or dumb barge used for carrying aggregates such as coal. There it is, there's the Newark. And last time I was here, I was actually sitting on one of those seats, taking it all in and it was lovely. I very much liked it big in there by the way really big place the Nine Elms Tavern and you can get like coffees cold drinks a whole lot don't know what it's like in the evening because I was here during the day as we head back along the river now towards Battersea it does frustrate me that we can't actually walk directly to Battersea along here we have to cut back in again um, and it's not the most direct route I'm guessing there's a reason and this is Tideway Walk. He's um, doing some work here. So if you can see behind those branches, it's Tideway Walk. And there we have, there we have the plane having a lovely view of the passengers and the shard. MI6 building, a decorated boat and other stuff. So this is Tideway Walk along here. As I said, the Nine Elms Tavern. Got these fountains. <laughs> becoming one of those describing what I can see walks and you can see the uh, chimneys of Battersea straight ahead and we're going to now have to turn back up and cross the road as I said a bit of a shame we can't like head straight through to Battersea you have to take a little bit of a diversion And we've got sort of container a bit like over at Trinity Boy Wharf see we've got containers here I'm guessing they're being used for space of some description right formula I saw this like the F1 car discover more I don't know what I'm looking at I don't know what that is okay so this is Nine Elms Pier you said definitely use of old containers here private property no admittance and we are now going, oh look at that barge, wow look at that, load of containers on there. We're going to go this way, past this very attractive grey wall, and I actually can't remember the way to go here, I think I go along here. Another plane, or is it the same plane that I showed you just now? You see the clouds are really coming up now. So it being the end of November, is it cold enough for snow? Is it cold enough for snow? It's seven degrees, so no. Um, you have to fiddle around with your dew, dew points, evaporation rates, all those types of things. Don't think we're quite there yet. But who knows, maybe somewhere north and east of London, maybe they'll pick up some snow by the end of the week. It's quite early. I know us Brits are aware that we're not a particularly snowy country, but overseas, sometimes I think they're some of the um, images from films and things as if we get snow and it's like no we don't especially the London area we're walking through a development here as you can see and you can see my slight issue are people looking into each other's windows and paying a lot of money for the privilege I don't mean to be down on the area by the way actually I, I very much like the redevelopment but I don't know perhaps I could have been a bit more careful with it is all I'm saying nothing more I'm actually going to um, at the end of this walk going to film the Christmas lights in Battersea power station but I'll do that as a separate walk and I'll, I'll just have a nose I don't know if they've got a Christmas market or anything like that 
um, I'm going to go and explore basically. Okay, I'm going to cross in a sec. So we just sort of briefly diverted back along the river here to show you some more river views. You see, last time I was here, I went over there thinking you could walk to the power station. You cannot get to the power station through there. You have to take a diversion. And that's what we're going to do now. Just see if I can find my way. I'll catch up with you again in a sec. So we just diverted up through here and I'll um, catch up with you once we're on the proper road to Battersea Power Station. See you in a sec. Okay, here we are at New Covent Garden Market. You can see this from the train and it is not to be confused with Covent Garden. Uh, it is the proper sort of, you know, fruit, vegetable, flowers, those types of things. I don't know what early hour of the day it starts but I know it's very early and it's pretty huge actually. So it looks like the entry area there. Literally right next to Battersea Power Station as well. Now we're going to come through here to Battersea Power Station. Whoop whoop. Here we are. And I was looking at a sign and it actually says this is a temporary diversion from the Thames path. So I'm hoping that um, that they'll sort of smooth it out as time goes on. Nine things you can do about climate change. A little mural here. As we approach the main entrance, and you can kind of pick it up, there's, there's people here now, pedestrians, with one goal, heading towards Battersea. There it is, the four iconic chimney stacks nice. I see a tree over there as well. Oh, just interested to see if they've got a Christmas market here. So we could actually have sort of battled our way through uh, the sort of building site there as well. But I wanted to show you the um, Covent Garden, new Covent Garden market. So I think that's quite, quite an iconic point here as well. So I'm just going to turn and point you in that direction. There it is. New Covent Garden market over there. And we have basically walked from Boxall Pleasure Gardens over to here. To rock up at Battersea. It's been hugely popular, um, Battersea Power Station, since it was redeveloped. I don't know how well it's doing. You get quite a mix of the shops opening and closing. There seems to be quite a lot of temporary uh, shops that sort of pop up for a while and then close again. You come back and there's a different shop there next time. All those sorts of things. And they have sort of gone more high end. So it's whether that's sustainable as well. We've got the hotel as well. Chris and Sandra in Canada. Chris and Sandra, did you stay at the hotel here? Got a feeling you did. Was it good? And you got these sort of quite uh, posh, swanky flats with like pools and things like that going on the top. Over here, I can see two Frenchies doing what French Bulldogs do, which is sniff a lot. <laughs> and have a wee while I'm filming. Hello, sweetheart. Right. <laughs> They're looking very French bulldog like. Saying, love, this is what it's going to be like. This is what we're doing. So you see, we've got some Christmas decks, Christmas lights, and things. Don't know what it's like where you are. So we're sort of final week of November here. And in our local sort of streets and things, this week, literally this week, people are putting up their Santas, their lights, their snowmen. So every night you go for a walk, you just seem to have a few more lights compared to last, the, the last sort of night before, things like that. I think we'll put our decks up this weekend. So it'll be technically December by the time we put our decorations up. Are you decorating the Christmas tree this year? 
Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. <laughs> always decorates the Christmas tree. Always, always. <laughs> yeah. Just going to show you there's another plane overhead. So they're all heading into Heathrow. Um, as I said, nice journey in as well. Right, let's walk around the side of here and then I'll sort of close off this walk. And I do hope you've enjoyed seeing a slightly different route to Battersea Power Station. So normally, um, I would and I would recommend go from Waterloo, take the Northern Line. You know, they've got a dedicated line through to Battersea Power Station now. So I would recommend that's your simplest route. But if you want to go for a bit of a walk, sort of soak in, you know, the energy in a somewhere slightly different, then do the Vauxhall walk along. I think it's quite nice. By the way, this is a big glamorous front entrance. I'm taking, I'm taking you in a side entrance to Battersea Power Station. So come on in here and I'll just show you. See, we're in. <laughs> Wasn't a dodgy place I was taking you at all. Just like that. We're in lovely Christmas lights at Battersea Power Station. And there you go. Christmas lovely. lights are my favourite lights. Yeah. <laughs> Love Christmas lights. Yeah. There we go. Just move you over here so you can see that lovely sign they've got up as well. While I get my bearings actually, it's like, which end are we in? Which end? I think I know where we are. Yes, I do. Now I know where we are. We're at the old control room B, which is done sort of Art Deco style. Like that. Right, I will sign off from this walk now, pointing you along Battersea Power Station. As I said, I'm just going to do a quick wander around, do a separate walk with some lights in it. I do hope you've enjoyed this walk from Vauxhall to Battersea. There will be more uh, Christmassy uh, stuff coming as well. I will see you next time. Bye bye.